Hello dear friends, a great welcome to the series on seismic assessment of various connections using Idea Statica. Myself is Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 30 and covers a seismic assessment of an unstiffened extended end plate bolted connection for an interior beam column joint following the guidelines prescribed in EN199318 and EN19981. So let us start Idea Statica tutorial number 30. Please note that the link for the playlist for all the earlier tutorials is given under the description of this video. So before starting this tutorial, I would like to provide you the difference between tutorial number 29 and this tutorial, that's tutorial 30. While tutorial number 29 performs the verification for an exterior joint, this tutorial takes up the case of an interior beam column joint. In both cases, we have considered an unstiffened extended end plate bolted connection. So as usual, the seismic assessment procedure, it remains the same. First, we obviously start with the joint design. Then in the second step, we classify the design connection based on its strength as well as the stiffness. And finally, we go ahead with the calculation of the joint moment of resistance as per the capacity design for a pre-selected set of dispositive components. So let us proceed for step number one. So the joint that is designed for the critical earthquake load combination, which is obtained from the frame analysis is given here. As you can see that it is an interior beam column joint. The column is an HEB 360 member and uh, the connected beams are of IP400. As it is expected that in uh, interior beam column joints, the column web panel will be the very highly decisive component. It is desired to reinforce the column web using the 20 thick column doubler plates which is provided on both sides of the column web. In addition, to further improve the shear capacity of the web panel, Continuity plates, which are of 15 mm thick, are provided at the top and the bottom. And in both cases, we can say that the end plate consists of eight numbers of M30 grid 10.9 bolts, and the end plate is provided on both sides is having a thickness of 25 mm. So we complete the step one. So now let us proceed to step number two. So in step number two, we go ahead with the calculation of moment of resistance of the designed connection based on the component method which is clearly identified in clause 6.1 of EN199318-2005. The main advantage of using the component method is that it provides us in the computation of the moment of resistance of the connection which are the critical components and that provides an opportunity for the design engineers to play with these components in order to arrive at the target resistance. For this connection, I have obtained using the component method the resistance of row 1 bolts as 608 kN. And it is observed that for this capacity calculation of row 1, this is the component will be the end plate in bending. And similarly, a calculation is performed for row 2, and here the capacity is obtained to be a slightly less, that is 0.93 kN, because it is observed that this capacity is controlled by the decisive component that is a beam flange in compression. So from the computed capacity of rows 1 and 2 and the corresponding lower arms, we arrive at the moment of resistance of the connection as MJRD as 464 kN. Now from the calculated strength of the connection that is 464 kN, I would like to classify this strength whether it is a partial strength equal strength or a full strength connection. Now to classify this connection as an equal strength, it need to have a capacity that is equal to the plastic moment of strength of the connected beam, in this case IP400, which is calculated to be 464 kilometer meter. So in this case we find that the moment of resistance of the connection almost matches with the plastic moment of resistance of the connected beam, that is IP400. So accordingly, we can straight away say that this is a case of an equal strength connection. Now please also note that if you want to 
develop a full strength connection then it need to have a capacity of a connected beam that takes care of the over strength of the beam and also the strain hardening and this requires that the connection should have a moment of resistance of 638 kilonewton meter therefore as per procedure number or the step number 2 we can say that the design connection comes under the category equal strength connection and please note that step number 2 will not provide you an exact classification that is required for the capacity design but this can be taken as a basis for your capacity design now here i would like to highlight one very important thing that is in the case of the interior beam column joints the column, column web panel is the critical component that will govern the behavior strength and stiffness of the connection so in this case a dedicated calculation is made regarding the column web panel and is found that it has got a capacity of 2300 kN and this is good enough to meet the column shear demand arising from the beam joint moments of 464 kN meter which comes from both sides. Now having done the strength classification, let us straight away go for the stiffness classification of the design joint. So here again, the stiffness of the joint is obtained from the component method based on close 5.2.2 and close 6.3.2 of EN 1093182005 and the resulting moment rotation curve is plotted here. And from the curve, the initial stiffness of the connection is worked out to be 598.1 mega newton meter per rad and as per EN 1993.18, the limiting value required for classification as a rigid connection is 202.4 mega newton meter. Therefore, we find that the initial stiffness is much higher and therefore the connection can be classified as a rigid connection. And on the calculation, we find that the rotation capacity is limited to 33.5 milliradians. Now, with a wealth of information now hand regarding the strength and stiffness of the joint, we can go ahead with the use of CBFEM software idea statica for the capacity design of the connection. Now, in idea statica, it is important that you design for the verification a set of dissipative components. Now, for this tutorial, I have selected the connected beams as the dissipative components, and then I have verified the so called non dissipative components for the strain levels as well as the utilization capacities. And the capacity design by the idea statica shows me that the connection, though it is classified in step 2 as an equal strength connection, it can take a capacity of to the tune of 635 kN meter, which qualifies itself to be categorized under the full strength connection. So we change the strength category from the equal strength to the full strength here, and the associative maximum passive strain in the capacity design happens to be 3.5, and please remember that these plastic strains are very specifically calculated only for the non dissipative components and there are no strain checks. Obviously, it is not required for the dissipative components. So, the maximum passive strain level of 3.5 happens to be less than 5% and the utility ratio of the boards is happened to be 99.7, which is less than 100. Therefore, we find that or we conclude that the design connection passes all the checks for its components and we also conclude that the connection can be considered as a rigid full strength connection. Now let me take you to the idea statica just to demonstrate to you the implementation of the capacity design for this interior beam column joint. So the idea statica model, 3D model that is developed for this joint is shown here. And as you can see that the column it essentially comes with an HEB 360 and uh, for the column we have considered an NVM model and uh, we have the beams on the left side as well as the right side and as you can see that essentially they are IP400 and please remember that in this case the loads are applied at position identified by 193mm that means we have applied the loads that is required for the load effects calculation at a position 193mm and this corresponds to the end bridge. So now coming to the load effects that is considered here uh, I have applied 
a moment m y that is equal to 635 kilonewton meter that's almost equal to a full strength required moment capacity of the ip400 considering the op strength in the material yield strength as well as the strain hardening now as you can see that the end plate the end plate it is provided on uh, for both the beams okay and as you can see that there are uh, there are a total of eight numbers of bolts for each end plate and end plate is of grade s355 the thickness of uh, 25 mm and uh, you can say that uh, the location of the all the bolts are provided here and uh, regarding the wells we have used a butt valves for connecting both the flanges and the well webs of the beam to the end plate now we have uh, also provided uh, what we call as uh, a column web doubler plate through the stiffening plate manufacturing operation and as you can see that this stiffening plate that is being provided on both the sides and uh, it's all the dimensions are provided here and as you can see that here the in order to ensure that this uh, doubler plate will be effective as you can see that it is extended up to the level of uh, the edges of uh, the end plate that means at the top edge of the doubler plate you can say that it matches with the top end of the end plate and further as you can see that it is a plate of uh, tinium thick made out of s 50 by grade steel and uh, this plate again that's a double plate it is again uh, uh, butt welded to the column uh, webs and then uh, we have all the weld specification that provide how uh, the stiffening plate or what we call as the double plate is welded to the column flanges and uh, we have uh, also what we call as the continuity plates as you can see it's continuity plates you can also say that they, they are also provided on uh, both sides of the column and they are provided at the bottom and the top positions corresponding to the beam flanges and uh, this uh, what we call as the continuity plates are uh, generated through the stiffness manufacturing operation and they are of thickness 15 mm and s 35 now finally coming to the dissipative components here uh, I have selected the dissipative components as the B1R, that's the right beam, and also I have selected the left beam. That means I have considered connecting beams on the left and the right sides as the dissipative components, and in each case, the strain hardening factor is considered to be 1.2. Please remember that in the capacity design, we increase the yield strength based on two factors that is the expected increase in the yield strength which we call as the over strength that as per the euro code works out to be 1.25 and in addition to this we need to apply a strain hardening factor of 1.2 so now we are ready for uh, the capacity design we have uh, populated all the details in the model so let us uh, quickly carry out uh, the seismic assessment using the capacity design for this beam column joint which is essentially an NGG1 so let us press the catalytic button and uh, this analysis will take a little bit of time and uh, okay it has uh, finished very fast okay because I think that in this case we have provided a, a broader mesh density okay and here we find that for the separate moment as I told you the non-dissipative plates non-dissipative plates we mean that we are talking about uh, the plates uh, which are essentially the parts of the column as well as uh, the continuity plates as well as the end plates and we find that the strains are of maximum 3.5 less than 5 percentage and the bolts have been okay stressed to a utility rate of 0.997 again it's less than 100 percentage so now let us quickly uh, go for the uh, a review of the results so let us press the check button here and uh, let us uh, first of all go for uh, the distribution of the strain that's very important for us so i will plus plus the plastic strain and in the plastic strain i will also plus the mesh here and uh, so let me just uh, make the undefined part over here so here we find that the strains in uh, the dissipative components it has gone up to tune of 7.7 percentage Whereas in the non dissipative components is only 3.5 but it is less than 5 percentage. Now as you can see here 
the critical strains where these are concentrated. Let us quickly go through the summary of the analysis results for the place. So here we find that the beam flange, the beam flange here 3.8, and here you see the beam is taken to a level of 6.2 percentage. The beam flange, okay, is B1 or TF1. That's a top flange, 6.2 percentage, and uh, 6.2 percentage here we have. And uh, you find that you find here that as far as the non dissipative component is concerned, the maximum strain, so that is somewhere in the end plate. So you find that the end plate it is it is taken to a 3.5 percent. So that is this 3.5 percentage. So end plate we are considered as a non dissipative component, and we find that this, the corresponding, even if we allow the over strength the connected beam, we find that. The end plates are good enough and they are capable of uh, withstanding a strain uh, which is far less than so 5 percent level, that's 3.5 percentage. And now finally, what I would like to do is, I would like to uh, provide you a little bit insight of uh, the strains for the various components. So let us just first, for example, uh, so looking into this, what we find is that the column web panel, we have already reinforced it. We don't have any kind of what we call as inelastic strains because it is already reinforced and it is safe and it essentially remains elastic. And here further again we find regarding the connecting beams, the strains are maximum. Okay, the strains are maximum corresponding to the top and the bottom flanges. And we find that at this particular moment, we find that the distribution of the strains they are almost spreading towards the interior probably providing a chance for the formation of the plastic hinges. And further, if we take the case of the end plate, so let us just take any end plate, we find that the, at the portion where the end plate is connected to the beam flanges, we find that the strains have gone up to a level of a 3.3 percentage, but it's less than 5 percentage. So this capacity that is obtained by this capacity design is acceptable for us. And uh, now, let me just quickly take you to the deformed shape of this uh, joint. Here, as you can see that, for example, let me just uh, give you, say, 15. So, look here. So, this is an indicative deflector shape, which says that, yes, the plastic hinges are about to form. Right here, we find from the spreading of the strains towards the interior, we find that there's a possibility of a plastic hinge formation. And this deflector shape will tell us, yes, the the connected beams are acting as as they correspond to the full strength connection and we find that the strains in the non dissipative elements are also within control and this is that the moment for which we analyze that's a 635 kN meter is good enough for us and finally as usual what we can do is that we can press that uh, report button and this report button will tell you uh, in summary, which are the uh, decisive components or, or uh, rather uh, which are the dissipative components and uh, how the strain calculation is uh, performed. Okay, so if you so you can get a summary of the various checks over here, which says that all the connections have all the connection components have passed the checks. And further here, as you can see that these dissipative components, that's the beam on the left and the right hand side, they are assigned a different material that's a S355 star, star which indicates that yes, in this for this components we assume an hour strength which is equal to 1.25 into 1.2 into Fy. That is, we consider material over strength as well as the strain hardening. And with all this increased material strength for the dissipative components, we find that other non dissipative components have passed on the checks, and therefore the descent connection is good enough to withstand a moment of 635 meter. So that's all. So I will take you to a different kind of a stiffened beam column joint in the next tutorial. Till then, bye.